Hello everyone, this is Gwydion, and today I'm going to be doing some 2D6 Dungeon, the Halloween or Haunted House expansion from about a year ago. Toby Lancaster, who created 2D6 Dungeon, he's released a lot over the last one to two years. I'm, I'm more of a Halloween horror kind of guy. I love that genre, so I haven't played the Haunted House expansion much, although it's been out for a year, and he just released... I think about a month ago, an expansion called Creatures of the Corn. So I'll probably try to do that as well, which is, it can be a follow-on. It doesn't have to be, but a little bit of a follow-on to the Haunted House version or of the game. So I haven't streamed in a while. Unfortunately, you know, work, life gets in the way. So uh, I was just jonesing to play something. So I decided to get this set up. And I'm also testing out, I got a new laptop. It was it was due for me. I think it was about five or six years and do everything off of one laptop when I'm streaming and and recording. So I really wanted to upgrade that. So we'll see how this all turns out. I hope it's good. I wanted to share a couple of things I'll be using today just to explain. So you can see this actually, although it may not be obvious up here, is just the book. So it's the hardcover book. It just I thought it looked kind of good up in the corner there. The mat here that you see, I'm sorry for the lighting. I'm just not that professional. So I might try to change that in the future. I, I usually do everything over like virtually, meaning I don't I don't have any of the live setup. So I just set this up so I could show off some of the physical components that I have. So over here, you'll see the bookmarks that you can purchase from the DR Games website. And this this whole setup here is from Tabletop Engineer. You can see I've got my little Gwydion laser engraving up there, which I think is awesome. This is this comes out if you want. You can pop it out easily, but it's a it's a dry erase board. This the tabletop engineer and and his you can buy this on Etsy, and I'll I'll try to remember to drop a link in the description below. But the he has a bunch of these sheets, and some of these have different variations on how big the note section is, but I actually used my laminator and laminated it. So now I can just use my dry erase markers and drop it in here. And I'm also going to use this as a physical dice tray. So over here, you can drop in your card for the combat fatigue and shift adjustment. We'll use that as needed. You have D10s for your dice and these stay in pretty solidly, which is awesome. I've got to get more dice D10s and maybe get the colors where I want them to be because like this is really hard to see. This is a uh, this is from League of Dungeoneers, so that one's a little bit tough to see. Your shift die, so right now I start with two. And then my armor, I have a, I think I have a quilt or a padded quilt. And it blocks on a primary threes, and I get to reduce the damage by one. So that's that. The dice over here, this is from, I don't know if I have, yeah, I do have my bag. So this is the 2d6 dungeon dice bag and when i backed 2d6 realms i i got the core materials from that and i also went ahead and, and splurged and and got a package of the 2d6 dice so i want to use that so we'll see how this goes like i said i don't usually do the streams that are kind of the physical live streams like this i usually do everything virtual but i do have some pdfs because i only have so so much space on my desktop. Let me know if anybody does watch this and I don't usually get a lot of comments on my videos, but if you do watch it and tell me, hey, you like the setup, hey, you hated it, that, that's totally, totally fair. I'm just curious what everyone thinks. So, all right, so I start with 10 health, no XP, and let's just get going. When you first start in the haunted house, the door closes behind you, you're locked in and you, you have to figure out how to, how to get out of the house. So the way I did this for now, I'm using just red. It's a little hard to see and the markers are a little thicker. I tried to get fine points. So I just made red. So it's a little bit easier on stream to show where the doors are. So we're going to start off. We'll go to the first door here. And the first thing you need to roll is on the what's called a haunted door table. So if you roll a five or a six, sorry. You roll a d6, and if you roll a five or a six, you roll. You have to roll on the haunted door table. So let's do this. That's a four, so no, I don't need to to roll on the haunted door table. So that's great. So now the doors all just open. So I'm going to open the door. 
And when I do that, I need to roll the rooms. Now these, the way these, if you can see them, let me get them down off of that darn light that's just bright. This is the x-axis die, this is the y-axis. So just, you know, a little bit of flavor so that, ooh, six by two. All right, and nothing in the house can be just a corridor. So if you get a one, you add a, you add a one to it and make it a two. So in this case, it's six X and two Y. Since I am horrible with drawing freehand, I'm gonna do it this way. Let's see if this works. So let's do, we're gonna do, let's see, six by two we said. So I'm just gonna do it down here. We'll go one, two, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, six. I'm gonna start there. Put six, and then we'll do Two up, two, so we'll close that off. This may not work well, we'll see how the, the markers work, but I thought it'd be. So here we go. I think I did that right. Six by two, so that's that. And then let's do our red markers. We'll figure out, we need to determine how many doors we have. We do have a handy dandy little door die that has Zero, again, zero, one, two, and three. So we'll just roll this, two, two exits. And I, I think it's always uh, based on, it's always an addition to the one that came in, I think. So we'll just say that's the way it is. We'll do one right in the middle. There, so you can see it. And then we'll do one, one on the side. All right, so we got two our two doors there. It's a little hard to see. Make that a little bigger, maybe. There we go. All right, so we have the two doors. Now we have to roll. Let me make sure. Sometimes I forget to put up my P PDFs, but we're going to go to the the haunted house tables. And so since this is bigger than six squares, it's a normal room. So we're going to roll on the haunted house tables. So I'm going to say... Blue is always going to be first and yellow second. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that differently. I don't know why. But we'll say the yellow or the gold die is first and then the blue is second. So yellow is always first. So what we're going to do is we'll roll and then I'm going to put up the PDF to show you. All right. So 35. So let's see if I'm going to put this down here so we remember it. And then I will show you if, if I set this up right. The table here. So three and a five is a study. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this in blue to make sure that I can see this better. And this is a unique room. So I'm going to use the notes section here. Sorry, the camera bounces around. This is, like I said, not my typical setup. So let's see if you can see this. My writing is horrible, which is why I type most everything. So we're going to say study. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this. Um, just so if I need to go back and I'm going to say room one study and then I'm going to put a, a one in here circle. Yeah, it's a little hard to see, but I'm just not good at drawing, so I'm going to leave it at that. So what does it say? There is a desk and a bookcase along one wall here. And again, for now, I'm not going to try to write that in, although I probably should. On the opposite side is an iron fireplace, in front of which a flurry of soot stains floor. Taps of moonlight slip between the gaps of the boarded up window. And in the encounter, it says, on the dusty desk sit the strange object. Roll on SOBT1 after you have examined it. So let's just pause there. Let's roll on SOBT1 first. And I think that's going to be in the haunted house tables. But let's check. SOBT1. Might not be. Not, then I'll open the, yeah, there we go, strange object table. So let's roll on that. So it is a, I think it's, yeah, looks like it's 2d6. So again, yellow. Oh, wow, 6-6. Six, six. I don't know if that's good or bad. So, so that is, you recognize the metal rod as a wand of branding. It has two charges, can be cast like a scroll and does eight hit points damage with a searing wound. Wow, that sounds pretty amazing. I'm gonna put that up here. I'm gonna say, what is that called? Wand, wand of branding. 
just to kind of remind myself of that. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to open, I'm going to close this down for a second and open a different version. I'm going to open my character sheet. I uh, thought I did that. So this is my character sheet. I won't hide this up all the time. Very creative name, Gwydion. I should have probably picked something else, but it has all of my basic information here. Now, this is a wand. I think, oh, this is from a previous game. I should have got rid of that. I can't release I have a PDF. Oh, gosh, I need to get rid of some of these things from a prior game. That's all right. I did not liberate a prisoner. Let's make sure all this is reset. Okay. That's good. And then we'll just have to get rid of the gold. Isn't that? Zero. Start with zero. All right. I think we're good. Go back up. And I'm going to, I guess I'll call this a screw. Well, no, you know what? I'm going to put it under, I'll put it under. I just want to have a note here. So I think what I'll do, I'm going to put it down here. I'll say wand of branding, and I'll try to remember that to charges. And then we can look it up again if needed. But I think you use that. So we'll go back, turn that off, and then we'll turn on once I go back to the haunted house tables. But I had the, yeah, there we go. Let's turn that on again just for a second. You recognize the metal rod. Okay, so cast like a scroll. That's the key. So that you have to roll doubles. That's that's challenging. So I'm only going to use that if I really need it. But in a pinch, we'll go back and, and look at that. So, okay. Turn that off for now. So let's go back to the room. Then I'll, I'll pull this back up again to show you. But don't want to show, show me scrolling the whole time. So we'll go back here. All right. So after you've examined it, you search the drawers and find a pouch, PT-1. Sketch of a woman with black hair and a small box containing 2d6 gold coins. Let's roll for the 2d6 gold coins. So that's eight. So I'll go to my character sheet. I won't. Well, it probably will show it. So let me just turn this off for a second. Go into my character sheet. I'm going to add eight there, but I don't need to show that. So we'll go back to our tables, and then we're going to find the pouch table, which is on the core rules. Hopefully I added, I think I did, See if I can find PT pouch table. There's PT. Once I pull it up, I will show you. I'm trying to get better at finding these. There we go. Pouch table one. All right. So we're going to roll that. So PT one, two, these fits. So that's a seven. Seven is a few coins rattle in the pouch, gain 4d6 copper coins and 2d6, excuse me, 2d6 silver coins. So, you know what? We're going to go to four is going to be copper and red is going to be silver. All right. So we've got nine, 10, 11, 12 gold coins. I'll add that. So 12 gold coins and 11. No, the other way around, 12 copper coins. I would wish 12 copper coins and uh, 11 silver coins. So let me turn this off. I'll mark that on my character sheet. So, so that will be 11. So I have 19 gold coins now and silver coins. I've got 12. I don't know if you'll use these or maybe I can use them after the game because this is kind of, you don't get to go out of the dungeon unless I find somebody that can sell me something, which would be uh, interesting. So let me go back to the haunted house table. Oh, so I guess I can write down. I do have a small box. I'm going to put that on my character sheet. Let's see where I want to put that. Small items. I think I'll put it a small item is a small box. Just in case I can use that later. And I don't think I'll ever be able to use it for, for inventive usage, but I'm, I'm going to put Get to a woman to see if I can get creative with that at all. So I'm putting that in my character sheet. All right, let's go back. I think that's it. Take a little more coffee. 
I don't know if you guys can hear the background music at all. Sorry, that was loud. But it's Plate Mount Games. Uh, I have all the rights to use. Everything I play, I have all the rights to use. I'm using Resonic Pro, and we're using just a dungeon ambiance. Or I probably should have done a little spookier maybe next time. Okay. So that's that. So now I think we're good. Now we're going to figure out which door we want to go in next. Oh, shoot. No, I forgot something. We have to we have to make sure this is only 11 by 11. So let me look at this. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I guess what we'll do, I'm going to do it this way. Eight, nine, 10, 11. We're going to go here. Hopefully I don't mess this up. I think it's just 11 by 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's 11 up, so let's do that. One, two, three, four. 11, so that's going to be the end here. All right, and bad. You guys get to see all this fun stuff on stream. And my dog's trying to break into my. Are you here? All right, I think that's going to be good enough. And I probably should not have done the exit on that wall. And yeah, I think I did this right. So you know what? We're going to take that off, and that's fine. We'll just have two. All right. I think that's good. Sorry about that. So we're just going to have one exit on here, whether that's right or not. And we're going to go to the door up. Pop, and we're going to roll just a straight up d6 and figure out if we have to roll on the haunted door table. Do we do not? So we can keep going. So now we need to roll for the size of the room. So let's roll the x and y axis. All right, so it's five by three. I keep getting pretty big rooms, which is cool. So let's do five by three. So that is one, two, hmm, you can't, I, guess, I think you can have a small, I know every square has to be filled, so one, two, three, four. So we're going to do five by three, so we're going to say one, two, three, and we're going to close that off. There, five, three. And then we'll roll for the number of doors. There's one door. So we're going to put the door here. Let's put it uh, not too close to the other. We're going to put it here. So we'll have that be the door. And what else am I missing? So this is going to be room two. Two, circle, and we are going to then roll to, so it's obviously it's a big room. So again, the yellow will be the first, 33, and I can't have a study again, so I'm going to make sure I don't, this I'll just do by hand, that's fine, say room two. So this is a 3-3, three, three, which is a library, so let me show that. So 3-3 three, three here is library. I don't have, must not have my cursor. You can't see my cursor, it looks like. That's all right. You can see a library at the bottom, 3-3. Three, three. So what does that say? This room was lined with shelving that surrounds a thick wooden table in the center, upon which are some scrolls, and what happens to be a full square ink bottle. Chair and old lamp are smashed to pieces on the dirty floor. You step forward and glass crunches beneath your foot. Figure standing at one of the bookcases, violently ripping up books, turns towards you. Roll on HLH1 and fight. All right, so I'm going to set this up. Uh, I apologize. I need to pause just one quick second. I'm not going to pause. I'm just going to step away and be right back. I have to close the door. That's what I get for streaming when my dogs are around. So here's what we're going to do. I have 
think I got these from a supplement. So I've sorted, I've printed out, printed out these cards and I just used my laminator. I didn't do any backs and you can see this one's a little, my dog got to this one last night. So I think what I'm going to do is just like sort the Shepheldies and then just one, two, three, four, five. I know this is silly, but I'm going to roll a four. So one, two, three, four. So this is going to be Killer Clown. So, yep, Killer Clown. So I'm going to put that up here, these cards away. So actually, I'll do it to where you can see it. So let's put him. Now oh, you can't really see it. That's all right. You won't be able to, to really see it on there anyway. So Killer Clown. So let me see. So he has 12 HP. So I'm going to do, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this yet, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a D20 and I'm going to put this dice off to the side here. So I'm going to show a 12. That'll be his hit points. I think what I'll do just to make it a little easier to read is he's got a shift. So even though you can see it on the card, I'm just going to put it here. Shift plus one. And what else do I have? Treasure block. So we'll say... So he he does a mask block on a primary twos and ones. So I think what I'll show here is primary primary two comma one, and we'll say let's see dodge on secondary threes, secondary threes, and both of those are minus ones. I don't think I have to worry too much about that, and that's probably. Yeah, I can't. Man, that's hard to read his damage. Just, uh, I think that's a 3-6. So he needs to get a 3-6. I'm going to do that right here. Uh, I'm going to put A for attack. I'm going to say 3-6. All right. So we'll see how this goes. But I think that, I think I like that. And we'll leave that there. So I believe, if I remember right, I get to attack first. So let's take off the table. And you don't need to see that anymore. All right. So, and then I guess I could have put it off to the side, but that's good. So we're gonna we're gonna move it up here. It doesn't matter if you see this as much, but that's a one. And we're gonna say shift shift adjustment is zero for now. So let's just leave all that. I've got two. I think we're good to go. So I will act him first. And just so you know, I need to go back and look at my character sheet. But I am using a heavy mace and I have a swing and an incisive cut. Do I need a 5-2 or a 4-3? So remember, gold's, gold, keep me honest, gold is going to be the first number. Sorry about that. Move that way. So gold first, blue second. So 4-3, wow. So that, oh man, I'm going to have to look this up. I, so that is an exact strike. I need to look that up because I know it does something special. But I need to find that strike let me find it and then so i'm gonna show that to you while i'm reading it too so achieving without shifting the dice which is what i did is called an exact strike as a demonstration of your prowess and skill it does more damage you may add your shift points to the damage total including the fatigue I don't have any fatigue yet so i get to add so basically i get in my case an add two shift so you can barely see that, but I'll take this off so you can see again. So I can add two shift to whatever damage I do. So in this case, my damage is. So the swing does a D6 minus one. So he's got a shift block of primary twos or one. So he doesn't do that, but he does have a dodge on secondary threes. So even though that's an exact strike, I'm going to do D6 minus two now because it's minus one for the swing. And then it's minus one because he dodges. But then I get plus two for my shift for the exact strike. So it's a straight up D6. I like rolling red for damage. So let's just roll a red for damage. Two. All right. Not great, but he goes down to 10. All right. So now let's roll for him. So same thing. So he's got a 2-6. So 2-6. And he needs to do a 
three six for his attack, so he does have one shift. So he can move this up to a three. And what does he do? So he does a slack. So his this killer clown has these like claws, I guess, that are slashing at me. So he is going to do. Oh wait, let's check. So a three and a six. So I block one on a primary three. So that's great. So he he does a d6 minus two, but plus special. So it's a d6 minus three, but then he gets something special. So one minus three, so no damage. But let's read this special again. So this special says, uh, the blade finds its target, cannot use one random piece of armor this turn. Okay, so I only have one piece of armor. So I guess the next turn, he won't be, I won't be able to use one random piece of armor. So what I'm gonna do to signify that is just move this out for a second and see if I can remember, I'll do a, it might be good to have like a counter. So I'm gonna use this as my, if I can remember round counter and say, look, I'm on round one. So next round, I won't, uh, I'll try to remember, can't use that. So let's see, and let, let's read a little bit of what this guy says. This says, a human that's gone insane and wanders looking for victims to attack. They wear a clown face, gas mask, and carrying a carving knife. So that's the slash, it's a carving knife, not his claws. Sorry about that. All right, so we are at round two. Let's move the shift. I didn't get any attacks, so now I'm in, I didn't get any, uh, any damage, so three five. So again, I still have two shift, and I need a four and a three or a five and a two. So I could move this to a four with one, and I could move, wait, what did I just roll? Oh no, I don't think I can. Uh, now I don't remember what it was. But I can only move this, well, was this a three? I, I must be able to, because I, I know this was a four or three. Gosh, I hope you, you guys can check me if I'm wrong. Oh, no, but you can't switch him. So this, I can only move down. No, I don't think I can. I think I could have done this two and this one. So I, I think I missed. Sorry about that. Boy. All right. I'll try again. The clown now. So he has a three and a one. Normally, I would block this, but this is the round where I can't use it. So I'm going to move that away and put this back so I don't forget. But I don't block. So he does, let's see, three and a one. Okay, so he can't. He'd have to move this five, so he misses. So we're going to go on to round three. And I'm going to go five, four. All right, so five, four. So let's look again. So I have a five, two incisive cut. So what does he do again? Primary twos and ones. So that would be good for me. If I move this, he does not block on a primary five, and he does not. He's not able to block or do anything on the secondary three. So if I move this down two, that works the best. So five, two. So incisive cut is a D6 plus one. So I'm going to use the red die again. Oh, I thought it was a six. One plus one is two. Slowly but surely, I'm hacking away at this clown. He is down to eight. And let's see. This is round three. So now he goes roll for him four and he has a six three so there's no way there's no change in the shift until you get to a four that's plus one so we won't we don't have to worry about that we go on to round four now though so the shift changes to plus one actually i'm gonna use this i think this was my this is kind of my counter die so plus one so what i'm gonna do i I don't know. For me, what I tend to do is I'm just going to move my shift to three because I know I always have two. So I don't forget, but I'll try to remember to add plus one to his. So, all right. So we're on to round four. And I get a huh, wish I could swap them five, two, but I can't. So I've got a two, five, and I'm not going to be able to. I can move this two, but I'd have to move this up two to get to a four, three. And I only have three, so I, I need four shift. So, all right, going on to him. He's got a two, four, and he needs a three, six. He he has a shift plus one. Actually, you know what I could do? Well, I'm just going to say plus one. And one is two, so he could move this to a, move this to like a three, five, but that's it. So we're going to move on to round five. 
don't want to have to use my scroll here or whatever. Uh, not the scroll, the wand. So we're going to move this to four for me because it's plus two. And let's see. I really want to get that five, two. Oh, yes. All right. So it's a five, three, but I can certainly shift that to five, two. He can't block. So let's roll our damage. And our damage is... One plus one is two. God, I'm just like barely, I don't know if I'm scared or what, but I'm barely hacking away at this guy. So he's down to six. All right, so he's down to six. So let's have him go. Three, five, so yes, he can move that up. So we go to a three, six. All right, but I still block, at least, I don't think he hit before, but I, I do block on a primary three. So I get to take off one. So it's D six minus three for him. So four minus three is one. So he does do one damage. So this, so I go down to nine. Luckily, my block is coming into play, which is great. So that's going down to nine. But he does get his special. So I'm going to put a counter on this again. Take off my point there. And I think I'm all square. I just have to remember I can't use that this next round. We're going to go to round six. At round seven, anything that he has with movement we will he doesn't get to do i think i'll have to read that again because i usually don't go that many rounds so all right so i have normally i have two shift to start plus three is five so he's gonna get three plus one is four let's try and take this guy out with a good strike here six four so again i can move this down one and then two more so that's only three shift so that's great i had three shift i had two left which doesn't really matter and now I'm going to do the damage. So come on, I really, so I get it, I really need like a five. Ah, that die's going away. I'm using a different, different red die next time for damage. That's a two. So that's down to a four. So he goes down to a four. Now he goes, so he needs a three six. So he has a one, two, so that will not do it. Because even though he's got three plus one is four shift, it would take him four just to move this up to a six. So that's good. All right, I'm gonna put this back in, this away. And this is now, I don't even have to show this anymore. I'm gonna look at my card though. I wanna remember this out. Let me read this again. So the most, okay, that's an, the most it's ever is plus three. When the fatigue match is four, put a D6 in the shift adjustment dice. Back the shift. Oh, it should have, I should have waited until it was round four. Did I do that? I think I did. But I think, I know there's also a rule and I might have to find it. So this will still be three, no matter what. But, well, I want to I want to look at that if it comes into play. Let's let's see. I'm going to look at combat sequence and I might show this to you. Shifting the dice, shifting restrictions, fatigue die. Yeah, you start when it reaches four, you get a plus one. But I know there's something armor deflection. Oh, here we go. Let me just show you this what I'm what I'm reading. So combat round seven onwards. From combat round seven onwards, creatures interrupt stats that involve movement or moving an item no longer count. So they're just tired. They're, they're yeah, they're spent. So for him, let me look at this again. So his interrupts mask block. I would say that's probably just it's on it. He has a mask on, so that's not a movement. And then that's primary twos and and ones. And then dodge on secondary threes. So I'm going to remove, I'm going to just take off his dodge on secondary three. So at least that way, just signify that now his mask still blocks, but he can't use that active dodge. So, okay. I think we're all square. My shift is to maximum of plus three. So I have five. Let's take this guy out. Two, one. So I do have five shifts. I can move this up two to a four and move this up two to a three. That's the best I can do. Four, three. But thankfully, he can't dodge now. So that, come on. I have, it, I have my new red die because you know how much that helps to change dice. So let's roll that. And okay. 
So that, and, and he gets a minus, so he gets a minus one. Yeah, that swing is a minus one, so that's his turn. No damage. So he does a three five, so oh god, he can move up to a three six. So he does that, and then he gets a three minus, but I do I do block, so three minus normally minus two, three minus three is zero, so he's not doing any damage, but again, he keeps getting this where I can't at least defend myself. So, all right, we're going on around, but there's nothing else to change. Let's see if I can take this guy. I realize this. See if we can take this guy out. Or four. Double, well, yeah, that's not a prime thing. It doesn't matter. But I really want to move this to a five, two, so I can do that with my shifts. That's fine. So I can move this to a five, two. And... So, yep, he doesn't have any blocks, and this is a d6 plus one. Two plus one is three. Oh, my. He has one damage left. Holy smokes. So, okay, and my block, I don't get to block, so let's see what he does. Six, four, unfortunately. Four, six, he can do that. Three, six, and I don't get to block. So I'm going to move this away. I remembered that, so he just gets his straight up d6 minus two. 3 minus 2 is 1, so this goes down to 8. And then from there, he hit me again. So this triggers, so I will count this again. So next round, I can't use my block. Go up another round, and nothing else changes. Man, this is a slog. This clown is just, with his knife, is slashing. Mm -hmm. oh, almost got an exact strike. 5-2. All right, but he can't block, so actually, in this case, you know I'll roll a six, because it doesn't matter what I roll now. Four. Highest roll I've had. Take the clown out. Wow, that was that was a tough fight. But that was awesome. So that's the library. <laughs> the clown in the library. Library. All right, I'm going to... Then let's look at... Let's look at his card first, because I don't want to forget. So this says you roll on PT1. So pouch table one for the treasure. Actually, sorry, let's let's do a couple things to clean up here. So we don't have to have that die anymore. We're going to erase that and really do that like that dry erase. And then we're going to get our XP, which is 20. So we'll move this to a two. So we've got our 20 XP and now we roll on pouch table one. So let me find my there is my tables codex there we go pouch tables one show that to you matter which dice is which that's a 10 there are some zoomerous leaves and two lq gems LQ, oh, low quality gems i think and roll twice on gmt one minus two let me see what that is so let's get the zoomerous leaves first and I do have, I have these little uh, boxes that are, I've got all the cards that I've purchased. So I've got like all of these, but I know that I have the Zoomerous Leaves in here. Here we go. So let's just keep that here for now. So Zoomerous Leaves, so what is the G, so two low quality gems, but that might be on the GMT one. Let's find that, see if I can find that. GMT one. Where is that? That must be a gem table, right? GMT. Where is GMT? Go. Where's my gem table? All right, you're forced to GMT1, come on. Where is my gem table? All the way up. There we go. It's going to be on the random table. I think it's just in one of the... There it is right here. So, sorry about that. I'm still showing the vertical. I knew I was going to have a problem with that at least once during this stream. Okay. So, GMT1. So, they're low quality. I think that makes a difference, but I'll look at that later. We will just roll two of these because we roll twice. So a five and a six, an emerald and a diamond. So 
I might look later off stream as to what that what those give you. But let's go back to our character sheet. And we'll put an emerald and a diamond. We'll put that under treasure. I'm going to put low quality emerald. Low quality diamond. And hopefully I can sell those. Or maybe even, maybe even, actually, you know what? There are no, there are no gods in this. So I can't use that for, if I could use it to get favor, you can't use that for the Halloween game. So let's get this out. Let's get this. Let's put this back here. Put the shift back to two. And I might call this pretty soon. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, yeah. Let's look at the rest here. Let's look at the rest of the description. And then, yeah, I think this will be a good place to call it. I've been going about 40 minutes. Probably a good, good enough time. So let's look at the rest of the library. And that's room two. Okay, so we fought. If you survive, search the table rule on SCT 1, 2, and 3. I think that's from the original tables. Let's see if we can find SCT 1, 2, and 3. Here is, so that's scroll table 1, 2, and 3. Awesome. I'm just going to roll 3. doesn't matter that they're different colors, but I'll roll 3 dice. We're going to say yellow, green, blue. Yellow, green, blue. That's the order. So yellow, green, blue. This is, so can't really see it. There we go. So on scroll table one, it's one is a scroll of balance. So I'm going to put that. I'll take this off and I'll just show you. I think you only get a certain number of scroll spots. I might have to give one up. I don't know how this works. So scroll tables have three scrolls. So on the first one, that is a scroll of balance. So let me put that on here and fill these out later, but I just don't want to forget. Let's go back to, I know you can't, you can barely see that, but a five on the second table is a, five on the second table is scroll of swamp lung. So I, I think what I'll do is before next stream I'll, stream, I'll decide which ones to keep. But let me go back. So this is swamp. I think I have to decide that. I'm going to say rule of the swamp. Long, and then I'll have to get rid of at least since I have mental whip and reflexes. I think I have to get rid of one or two of these. So what's my last one? My last one was a three on scroll table. Scroll table three. Three scroll of sunder. Ah, gosh darn it. So scroll of sunder on scroll table three. Wait, is that right? Yeah, it's Will of Sunder. Okay. So I'll go back, do this, do this, and we'll go to my character sheet. And again, I think I have to, I'm gonna read the notes offline or the book rule of Sunder, but I think I can only keep three scrolls. And right now I have five. So I believe I'm gonna have to drop a couple of scrolls. So that's, I think that's a good time to stop it. I went through a couple of rooms, I had a battle tested out my new setup. Let me know what you think. Uh, I really enjoy 2D6 Dungeon. I hope this was useful to you. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a comment or a like if you do. And if not, just tell me what I can do better next time. So till next time, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend if you're watching this today and a great rest of the week if you're watching this during the week. So thanks all. See you next time.